Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. In 1996. Trumpets, guys. Six. I think this is the only one in this entire... Oh, I don't think I've seen the Scottish oysters either, actually. But every other one I think I've seen. Stilton cheese, uh, Worcestershire sauce, amazing. Stinking bishop cheese, bacon. Yeah, I, I went through them. So I haven't seen this one, though. Let's watch. Uh, hi, guys. Hope you're doing well. Sorry, manners. Well, awesome. Uh, link to the original video, top of the description. Let's go. Crumpets. I'll finally be able to know what it is. Hello? Uh, all I know is when you say crumpets, I think of tea and crumpets, which makes me think it's a type of cookie. Today we're in Enfield in London to find out how traditional crumpets are made. And uh, for those of you who don't know, crumpets are a very British thing. They are similar to toast, similar to pancakes, similar to bread, but they're neither bread, neither pancakes. So today we are at Warburton's, which is the UK's they look like English muffins. largest crumpet producer. Imagine, in Enfield alone, they make 36,000 crumpets per hour. Are crumpets just English muffins? Have I been eating crumpets my whole life? British crumpets. So what are they exactly? And Oh my god, it's an English muffin. We guys, we call these English muffins. They and and it has uh butter and jelly on it. I eat these all the time. Okay. How did they become so popular within British cuisine? It is said that crumpets originated in the Anglo-Saxon period during 410 and 1066, and they were originally known as pikelets. Those look like they pancakes, were small, yeah. hard, oval-shaped biscuits cooked on a griddle and had a pancake-like appearance. During the Victorian era, the recipe was altered to include yeast and bicarbonate soda to give them a soft, spongy look. What about its name? Its origins are unclear, but there are a few suggestions saying it may have come from a 14th century reference to a crumpet cake, which was a crumpled and curled up cake, and the old English word crumpeth, which also means crumpled. Warburton's is a business. We, we were founded back in 1876 in Bolton uh, and over the last 140 years we have grown and grown from a, a local business to a regional business to now a national business to be the number one bread brand in the UK. Within British culture the crumpets plays, plays a really important part because it is a staple of a British diet, effectively. Um, we see it traditionally over the years. It's always been a breakfast accompaniment. So rather than toast, people would have crumpets, that was Prince Harry for a jam. But we've seen that evolve as well. And, and over the years, people now are starting eating crumpets with ham and cheese on top. And it's become more of a, a meal accompaniment. So the, the pro Yeah, I use most of the time I eat it, it's with uh, butter and jelly on it. Or... Maybe with like some butter on it with like like this or not not like this compliments oh and, and over the years people like this right with some some scrambled eggs and and bacon and stuff now i start eating crumpets with ham and cheese on top and it's become more of a, a meal accompaniment so the, the process of actually making a crumpet is quite quite complicated and technical but very simple in its approach so we take our raw material so flour water yeast a little bit of brine but what we then do is we need to activate the yeast so the mixing process will generate a bit of heat and start to get the, the batter warming up to around 40 degrees. At that point, the yeast starts to activate. And part of that process is that the yeast will start to consume the sugars that are present in flour. And as they're consuming the sugar, they're actually, as a byproduct, releasing carbon dioxide. That's the magic. We then take that and deposit it onto a hot plate. So the hot plate runs at about 200 degrees and we deposit fixed amounts of batter into the rings. As the batter hits the hot plate, it will set the base of the crumpet. But as the heat then starts to go through the base, it starts to heat the water and Bubble boil it. the water. 
and the water turns to steam. And as the water and the crumpet and the heat's going through the batter, we're actually expanding the CO2 bubbles. Looks just like a, a forming, you know, a cooking what pancake. What happens then is as the bubbles expand and the steam is looking for the easiest way out, it's pushing the CO2 up through the batter. As that comes through the batter, it's actually setting the walls of the hole. So when the gas is released, that's how we form the holes in a crumpet. The surfaces of the crumpets are then toasted for around 20 seconds to give them the finishing touch. What you may find interesting is that the crumpet doesn't need to be toasted at all, as Warburton's told us that it's solely for aesthetics as the crumpets are already cooked. Once toasted, the crumpets that- I love mush. It doesn't just have to be food, just any factory. I don't know what it is, just stuff like this, these machines, I just get mesmerized by it and I could probably watch it for hours, unfortunately. Once toasted, the crumpets then go on to be cooled in three separate rooms, and the assembly each with line, varying you know. temperatures. First, starting at 18 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees, and then 10 degrees. Trying to convert to air Fahrenheit. After being cooled, a system scans the crumpets, inspecting each one for their color, porosity, and consistency in shape. What's 10 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 40 degrees. 10 times 1.8 is 18 plus 32. Wait, no, that's 50. The crumpets highlighted in this green border signify that they are good and ready for packaging. This row here, without the green border, this means that they're not quite up to the standards for Warburton's, so they're taken off the line. These custom-made robotics are capable of picking up 86 crumpets a minute, sending each one onto the final stage of the process, packaging. So, I forget the name, Pepperidge Farms, that we, so they don't look exactly like, they, these are absolute, I guarantee they would taste exactly like English muffins, they just look too similar, uh, but they don't really have a bubbly top, I, I don't think I have one, but I w would want to go get one for you, um, but is this something that like everyone has at, at their home, just, or am I just, Stereotyping British people. So we got a packet of crumpets straight off the line. I'm actually very excited about this because despite having lived in the UK for more than seven years now, I've actually never had a crumpet in my life. I know it's a disgrace, so I'm gonna make up for it and uh, give it a try. Nice. <laughs> I love how it's very crusty in here. Like the bottom has a very, very strong, strong and solid crust, and and the top is like spongy, soft. I would say you almost get two flavors. You get the the savory, the savory crust of the bottom side, and then like a, a more a more sweet taste of the of the spongy spongy top side. It's uh, it's very nice. I love how the butter is like completely disappeared into the holes, which means that when you bite into it, you actually get the buttery taste in there. The texture is it's nice and spongy. It's cakey. Like I and can't yeah. see myself eating one especially maybe like with jelly on it but just with butter on it just as a standalone thing I, I would usually eat it like have it with breakfast foods you know or just have jelly on it and then suddenly i think it's okay to eat as a meal yeah it's just a just a nice discovery for me i wish i wish i had known about crumpets before like where were my british friends when i needed them guys i had to know about this seven years ago 
From a production perspective, uh, when I look at crumpet plants, we've got three crumpet plants, and on average we produce 36,000 crumpets an hour, which equates to about 6,000 packets of six-pack crumpets. So when you look across a week, that's equivalent to about 800,000 packets coming out of our infield site alone every week. So in order to make 800,000 packets of crumpets a year, we have to have a shift pattern that's robust enough to facilitate that, and, and we run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have four, four shifts that operate 12 hour shifts across the seven days of the week. We only shut as a business on Christmas Day. So we are actually producing products 364 days of the year to make sure that our customers always get what they want. Make sure we make money is what it means. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, really interesting, right? I want to check. I, I was thinking about just doing it in the same video, but I'm not. Um, I will do it in a separate, and I might have even seen it. I have seen this one. No, actually. So the only one I hadn't seen is the one I just watched. Uh, really interesting. Um, I really expected them to be like a cookie, you know? Like a, a little standard breakfast cookie to have with your tea or something. Um, but they were much more similar to the... Wait, were the clotted cream... Was this on a crumpet? Is this a crumpet? A sad symbol. In an afternoon, owner of the farm to enjoy. That's what I would call a biscuit. What do you guys call these again? All right. Cool video. Hope you guys are doing well. I uh, would appreciate any comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.